This was April 25th, 2015. At about 11.55 in the morning, the seat that I was sitting on started shaking. The ground is shaking. A 7.9 magnitude earthquake had hit Nepal and had hit the base camp as well. What's going to happen next? And then we hear this loud boom, almost like a bomb blast happening somewhere. The sound of the boom was coming from towards Everest. All of us were standing and looking towards Everest. And in that time, something very unusual happened. There are all these climbers in the team that was in front of us that all started running towards Everest. So I'm standing here and thinking, if the danger is Everest, why would someone run towards the danger? It does not make any sense. The danger was actually behind us. That moment, all of us turned. Oh, oh. And when we turned, I saw the most horrifying sight of my life. We were faced by this giant cloud. Left from the sky to the right of the sky, it filled the entire sky. We were faced by this giant block of snow. In that moment, I didn't think that I was going to die. I was actually very certain that I was going to die. I was trying to, you know, breathe. But I could not breathe at all. Fuck! 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 It's only, you know, like no air, but only ice particles going into my lungs. Almost felt as if someone had taken a plastic bag, put over my face, and almost was choking me. I'm heading in the kitchen, Ted. Yeah, maybe. Stay together. All the air from the environment had been sucked out. The guy who was next to me, a German climber named Jost Kabush, was seeing my entire struggle. And in that moment, he told me, Kuntal, you can come inside my jacket and breathe. Come under my jacket. Come under my jacket. Are you okay? Yeah. You alright? Yeah. So I went inside his jacket and I started taking, you know, I started breathing. And of course, to my surprise, I was actually able to breathe. No problems whatsoever. And I realized that inside his jacket, there were still ambient pockets of air that I could go and breathe from. So I would go inside his jacket, I would breathe, I would come out, I would struggle, I would go inside his jacket, breathe again, come out, struggle. And this entire thing went on for three minutes as the avalanche passed over us. The entire base camp was devastated. The entire base camp was actually flattened. A Japanese couple walked in front of us and the Japanese ladies, half of the face was just missing skin and bones, that's it. We quickly realized that initial estimates were about 6,000 people were dead, a few hundred thousand were displaced from their homes. This was not a mountain climbing tragedy, it was a tragedy of unprecedented levels. As a team leader of the team, I had to take a decision. I spoke to the Sherpa team leader and our entire team wanted to go home. To be very frank, I was willing to wait one inconsequential year to come back again and climb that mountain.